Hello guys, uh, welcome to today's lecture on the normal distribution. So this is lecture two for you guys, I think, on normal distribution. Um, yeah, so uh, we're going to start by talking about something called the standard normal distribution. And uh, a nice example of this is when we use our calculators. So I'm going to bring up the class Here they are, over here. Cool. All right, so if I went on to statistics mode and I go to distribution, normal distribution, and I'm just going to plot any old thing. So I'm going to put in a mean of, let's put 5 in, uh, 5 in as my sigma and 10 in as my mean. Uh, let's plot this so we have a look at what it looks like. Okay, so remember I told it to have a mean of 10 and a sigma of 5. If I zoom in though, This clearly has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of about one. Interesting. So, um, <clears throat> this specific distribution is the oh, sort that out. Is the um, standard normal distribution. And um, basically. The idea behind this is there is kind of one standard normal distribution, which is a distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So Z has a mean of Z is normal with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, which is what you can see in this plot. Now, whenever we're doing a normal distribution question, we're using something that's approximately normal. So we've got, um, for example, if I had a, uh, I'll make up a normal distribution, x is normal with a mean of 2.2 and a standard deviation of 0.2. And this is actually the distribution, the length x is the length of giraffe next cool so I've got my normal distribution here for drops and this is my standard normal normal distribution <clears throat> now what your calculator does is the calculator doesn't know every normal distribution in the world that would be crazy the calculator knows one normal distribution which is this one and it knows every probability for every single x value you could have in this distribution. When you tell it to work out some mathematics based on this distribution, it makes this distribution fit this, does the maths using this distribution, and then puts it back into this distribution. So I'm going to sketch both, and we'll, we'll talk about how and why this happens, and then we'll go to some examples of how and why this happens. So if I sketch my... Uh, Standard one, mean of zero, and sigma is about one. So one minus one, two sigma, three sigma, so on and so forth, minus two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, again, not drawn scale because the points of inflection should really be uh, one, but whatever. If I do the same thing for my giraffes, my mean is 2.2, .2. mean plus sigma would be 2.4 mean minus sigma would be 2, then 1.8, 2.6, etc. So for the calculator to do calculations about my giraffe, about my giraffe one, I need to make this function fit this function. And the way we do that is through transformations. So it's a lot like we're transforming one shape into another shape. So the way we do that, if we imagine we want to move, let's get in the middle of these. Imagine if we want to move this one and put it here. Because at the moment, the mean for this is at 2.2. .2. We want it to have a mean of 0. So we're going to translate the whole thing by 2.2. .2. So we're going to turn all this into an equation. Oop. Turn all this into an equation. And we're going to say z equals x. So my z distribution the one over here, is this one, minus mu, 
So imagine every giraffe, I took away 2.2 from its average neck length. If you average the new lengths, they would work out as zero. But the other thing I need to do, because at the moment this has a spread of, if you have a look, from what, 2.6 to 1.8, we've got a spread of about 0.8, whereas this one has a spread of, well, normally it would go from 4 to minus 4. So we need to change the uh, the spread of the data, we need to change the width of the data. So what we're going to do, we're going to squash our normal distribution, or stretch it, depending on what we need to do, to make it fit. So, so we make our normal distribution have the same width, the same spread, as our z distribution. And the way we do that, well, if this one has a spread of 0.2, we want to make this have a spread of 1. So if this one has a standard deviation of 0.2, we want to make it have a standard deviation of 1. If we divide this by 0.2, it will now have a standard deviation of 1. So it's kind of like in vectors, if you want to find a unit vector, <coughs> which is a vector of size 1, we divide the vector by its own size to make it have a size of 1. We want to make this have a spread of 1, we're going to divide it by its current spread. So we get this equation, and you need to learn this one. So this tells you how to turn any normal distribution into a standard normal distribution, which is what the calculator will use. Cool, uh, welcome Tom, Ollie, and Emily. If anyone else is there, could you guys comment your names just so I know who's in the class? All right, um, so yeah, the calculator does a pretty good job of these. Uh, let's just put some labels on this so you can add it to your notes. So we've got Z, um, let's get rid of this one. Z is the value in the standard normal. X is the value in your normal distribution, so in your distribution. Mu is the mean of your distribution. Hello, Ben. And uh, sigma is the standard deviation. distribution. So that has <laughs> got a bit messy here. Uh, does that make sense? We're turning one distribution into the other by translating it and then squashing it to make it fit a classic normal distribution. Okay, so it's yeah, basically a transformation. Okay, um, so you guys are kind of lucky. You've got the graphical calculators and these naturally do all this for you. We're going to see some questions where we have to actually transpose it by hand, and um, <clears throat> that's what the purpose of today's lecture is. What students used to have to do was every single question, they had to turn it into Z, then they had to faff around with this, which is a statistical table. So I don't know if you guys can see this. These are every X value between 0 and 4 in the normal distribution and the probabilities that go with them. So they didn't have the calculators to do this. They had to look through this table to find the value, match it up, and then turn it back into something that made sense with drafts or whatever the actual question was about. So you guys have to do a lot less of this rubbish, but there's still a little bit of it left. OK, so uh, we're going to try a question. We're going to start with a relatively easy one. Um, but this will start to use some of these tables. So <clears throat> next we need to talk about the percentage points table. So I'm going to zoom in on this one. So this table you guys do need to use. So I'm going to read through the text and then after that we will just focus on what the actual table says. So it says the value Z in the table are those which a random variable Z is a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation 1, exceeds with probability p. That is, pz is greater than z equals 1 minus blah 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 equals p. So it's that sounds very confusing. All it means is it's a table that does greater than probabilities for a standard normal distribution. So if I just move myself out of the way as well. So I'm going to do a quick sketch so I can kind of explain what this table means. So if here's a normal distribution, this is going to be the standard one, standardized one with zero there. 
Isn't that chart still the back of one back? Yeah, the um the chart is still there. This is the one we need though. This is the smaller smaller one. But yeah, I think they do still leave the stats tables in the book in case people's calculators break. I think. Um, good comment. So yeah, uh, the mean of this one's zero. So it's a greater than table. That's the key bit to remember for this. This table is greater than. So it's when z probability z is greater than z equals p and p are the values in the table so let's have a look if i look at the first uh, let's look at this one here if we look at 0 0.3 in the table if my probability which is the area is 0 0.3 i could look at the table find my probability of 0 0.3 which is here and that corresponds to a z value of 0.5244 so we can write that down on the axis 0.5244 so this table is for when you know the probability and you want to find what z is. Also, it has to be a greater than probability, as we said here. It has to be the bit above your z value. So for probability of 0.3, which is this area, we found 0.5224. Cool. Um, and we're going to mix this up with uh, the standard well, the, uh, the non-standard distributions later. For, for now, we're just looking at Zs. We're just looking at this classic normal distribution, zero as its mean and one as its standard deviation. So I would like you guys to try these questions. I'll give you a couple minutes to try it. If, uh, if you could write your answers in the comments, that would be great. Um, for each one though, I want you to sketch the normal distribution, label where you think A is, label the probability you know, and then see if you can use the table. Two things to remember though, it's for when it's for greater than table is one thing. And remember, if zero is there, you might have A here would be positive. You're going to have a corresponding A value that's negative because this curve is symmetrical about the mean. <clears throat> so remember, you've got 0.5 area here, 0.5 area here, symmetrical. Ah, symmetrical about the mean and this a value and this a value are the same number but one is positive and one is negative all right so i'll put four minutes on the timer see if you guys can use the table to find those four probability or to use those four probabilities to find those four different a values so i'll give you guys i think three minutes to try and get these uh post in the comments if you need any help or post in the comments if you've got a solution but yeah three minutes starting now give it a go Who's that who's just joined us? Um, uh, what did I show? Okay, basically then we are sketching. If you, if you just copy these down, I reckon you'll be able to catch up by the end. And if you just go back and rewatch the beginning of the video. Okay, Lucas, yeah. Um, 
wait for us to go through this example in a minute's time. Ask me a lot of questions then. I'll try and fill in the gaps. But basically the idea is we looked at normal distributions last lecture. We've got, uh, there's a kind of stereotypical classic normal distribution that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And that's like the normal distribution that your calculator uses to calculate everything with. So when you type in a normal distribution, like you type in your own mean, your own standard deviation, the calculator then turns that distribution into this classic traditional normal distribution and then uses that to do some calculations. So everything the calculator does is via first turning a distribution into this distribution and then doing the maths on it. Cool, all right, um, so we're gonna go through this one. So uh, for each one of these, I'm gonna do a sketch so you guys can see what's going on. And Lucas, I'll keep checking, just uh, comment. So it's like the original, yeah, yeah, it is the original distribution. It's, it's really, it's the only real normal distribution. Everything else is an approximation, roughly a normal. How's it turned into it? Uh, we'll go through that in a minute. For now, we're just kind of looking at the original distribution. The next slide, we're gonna start mixing them together. So, uh, part A, we've got the probability Z is greater than a value is 0 0.4. So if it's 0 0.4 above it, if there's, sorry, if there's 0 0.4 above it, it must be somewhere around here. Because remember, half of the graph is 0.5. So for it to have 0.4 area above, it must be around here. So I'm going to put the line in there, call that A. We know this probability is 0.4. Remember, this table is only for when it's greater than, but we've we've got greater than here, so we can use this table. So I'm just going to look through, find 0.4. There it is. So that A value is going to be 0.2533. So for part A, the answer, 0.2533. Okay, let's do the second one as well. So part B, given the probability Z is greater than this value is 0 0.1. So there's not much chance, so it must be really, really high up this time. There's A, this area is 0 0.1. Again, it's already a greater than sign, so we can use this table, find 0 0.1, there it is, and we get Z is 1.2816. So A equals 1.2816 which makes sense remember we're dealing with the standard normal distribution so we've got zero in the middle see so yeah, we're expecting the first answer to be a lot closer to zero because it's got more probability above it this one has less probability above it so the value is going to be much further away from zero all right let's have a look at part c and part d then which are a little bit trickier. So part C, probability Z is greater than this value is 0.8. So that's a lot, there's a big chance a value is gonna be greater than this A value. Uh, yeah, this, this was on the old spec, but this is all that's left of it. You used to have pages of these, and this is the only bit that is left of uh, of the stats tables. So yeah, um, looking for probability you're greater than A is 0 0.8. So A is going to be right on the left here and all this probability is 0 0.8. So here we're going to run into a bit of problem. If, if I put zero in there as well, 0 0.8 isn't in the table. The table starts at 0.5. The other thing you might notice is that Z is positive in the table. There are only positive values in here. So really the table is only half of a distribution. We've got something on the other side. So we're going to have to think of a different strategy to find it. So what we can say, because obviously zero is here in the middle, A is to the left of zero. Therefore, A is definitely a negative number. So I'm going to call it minus A just so we remember this value is negative. 
Now, normal distributions are symmetrical. So if 0 is here, A is here, there should be another value, a positive value of A, that's here that has the same area above and below. So if I write that in in red, there's another value here of A. And if the value below this A is 0.2, the value above the red A must also be 0.2. Ah, well now I've got a smaller value which will be in my table. So I can find this value and this value is going to be the negative version of this value. So if I read through this, I can find 0 0.2. There it is. I get 0.8416. So red A is 0.8416. The value we're trying to find is the negative version of this. So A equals minus 0.8416. Cool. Is everybody all right with that? So because it wasn't in the table, because it was a massive probability, we found the positive version of it instead found that and then just made our answer negative where it all worked out. Cool. All right, good. So last one, which is similar to this one, but worded a bit differently. We're now told the probability Z is less than A is 0 0.3. So again, there's not much chance it's going to be less than it. So A is going to be about here. The probability here is 0 0.3. Again, we've got the same problem. A is actually negative, so it's not going to be in the table. So we're going to look at the other version of A here. We know the probability above it is going to be 0 0.3. Look in our table. There it is. So A is 0.5244. So minus A, we're going to get A is minus 0.5244 as our answer. Yeah, probability is always the area with uh, with any distribution. Cool. Everyone all right? Everyone okay so far? Cool. All right, we're going to do some kind of easier ones now without using the table, and we'll come back to the table in a minute. But I just want you guys to get used to the fact there is a standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So next slide. All right, <clears throat> there's an answer there I'm just going to get rid of. So could you guys try and do this one on your calculators? Do a sketch first, and I want you to find these two sets of probabilities. Um, I'll give you three minutes for that, which is quite kind. You'd probably be a lot quicker than that. Can you comment your answers in the chat when you've finished? Cheers. So who else is there? I've got um, Tom, Oliver, Emily, Ben, Lucas. Who else is um, watching at the moment? I know uh, Harry, Sally, and Finn came to this morning's lecture because they wanted to go surfing. Uh, but as it says there's nine of you. Who else is who else is watching that I know? Or are you all randoms?
All right, hey James, I don't know who you are, but hello. Um, so could you guys put your answers in the comments when you find them? Ooh, Tom's got an answer. Um, I've lost that pages of notes now. Where is that answer? I'll chat at the end about um, exams and such, because, uh, yeah. But yeah, at the end, we'll, uh, we'll have a chat about things. Yeah, nice guys. All getting it right. Brilliant. Let's uh, let's get back to it then. So uh, let's go through these ones nice and quickly. You can do all this on the calculator. So bring it up and let's type some stuff in. So our lower minus 2.16, upper minus 0.85, sigma of 1, mean of 0. Scroll down, plot it, make sure it looks right. Looks good to me, and um, we get probability 0 0.1822, which is what you guys all said. Good. Okay, the other one is the same. The numbers you'll notice are positive versions, so we can do the thing again, but we just get the same area, um, but moved. So we'd get this area would be here instead and it'd be worth the same amount so yeah good awesome well done everybody sweet all right uh let's move on then so now we're going to start trying to combine all this stuff so going to read through this one and talk you guys through it so we're going to use the table two two parts two parts of this question use the table to find the value of z such that z is this. So that's what we just did. We're trying to use this table to find the z value that corresponds. Okay. When we've done that, it says a fighter jet training program it takes only the top 2.5% of candidates. Well, 2.5% is 0 0.025. Okay, so that tells us something. Given the scores can be modeled using a normal distribution with a mean of 80 and standard deviation of 4, use your answer from part A to turn the answer to part A into the score that students needed to get on this fighter jet training program. So could you guys try part A? And if you want to try part B, I'll give you that equation again. Z equals X minus mu over sigma. So you're basically being asked to find Z and then use mu and sigma to turn Z into an X value. So Lucas, this is what you asked about earlier. This is how you turn the fighter jet normal distribution into the Z normal distribution. We're starting with Z though, and then turning it back into a, a test result for whatever this, this situation is. Could you guys give this a go? Um, part A should be easy, part B slightly harder, but you're just using this equation. So let's say three minutes this time and see how that goes. If you're unsure what I mean, then uh, just just say, and I will do my best to respond. This one, so part A, just do that normal. So you're going to sketch it, put in 0 0.025 as a percentage of above Z, and look through the table and go with it. Okay. Find that Z value, write it in the red equation where it says Z, put in mu and sigma of 4. Cool, yeah, nice, James. It is, that is the correct answer. Uh, but remember that we're talking about a score and a test. Could you score a result? Oh, 
Oh yeah, I put it over my head. Sorry. Uh, so you're going to use the uh, use the probability uh, to find the z value. You can sketch it as well. So look through the table, find that probability, use the z value that corresponds to it, um, and then put that value back into z with mu and sigma. Rearrange it to try and find x, which is your answer to part B. Oh, you're slightly out there. Yeah, that'll that'll change your other answer as well. Lucas, is that making sense? Sweet. Cool. All right. Um, so, yeah, some of you guys got it. Uh, let's go through this then. So if I quickly sketch my distribution down here, uh, we're told Z is so zero there. Probability greater than 0 0.025. Let's do that again. And we're trying to find this probability here. So if we look, sorry, we've got the probability of trying to find the Z value. If we look through the table, there is the probability. So Z equals 1.96. So part A, Z is 1.96. Okay, part B, we're trying to change the Z value into a value that makes sense in the context of this question. So we're trying to turn the uh, standard distribution into the distribution of these fighter training um, things. So we're going to have 1.96 equals x take the mean which is 80 divided by the standard deviation of 4 and if you rearrange that you get x equals 87.84 but because it's marks in the test x will need to be 88 marks because you can't have 0.84 of a mark. Are you given the equation? No. Are you given the table? Yes. But the equation is easy. It's basically just subtract something to shift the function and then divide it to squash the function. So we're forcing it to have a mean of zero and a spread of one. All right, uh, next one. You guys are going to try another question all on your own. Um, so here's the next question. So part A is similar, we're trying to find two values of Z, the values that correspond to the 10 and the 90th percentile ranges. And then we've got a light bulb that we're trying to work out its lifetime if it fits into the ranges from part A. So this is a very similar question, you're just doing it twice this time. So four marks, I will give you guys five minutes. Yeah, Z is always the standard distribution and X is normally the non-standard. So yeah, uh, five minutes for this, give it a go and uh, comment if you need any help.
How do you find 90%? How do you find 90%? Uh, well, remember the table is for greater than. So if you want to find the level where there's 90% less than it, you're looking for 10% more than it. Yeah, James, nice. Cool. See if you can do Pop B. Nice guys, don't forget to find the uh, the lower limit though. We're looking for the the range, so we need to find the the bulb length for the tenth percentile and the bulb length for the ninetieth percentile. So I think James and Emily, you've got answers, but you've both got only the uh, the ninetieth percentile. We need to find the tenth percentile bulb length as well. Cool, yeah, looking good. So it's the range of those two values that you guys have found. Cool. All right, so uh, we'll go through this. So percentage points, find the Z values that correspond to those two. Well, let's do a sketch. So remember zero in the middle, we want to find the 90 percentile. 90 percentile means there'll be 10 or 0.1 above it, and the 10th percentile means there'll be 0.1 below it. Because it's symmetrical, these Z values will be the same. So we just need to look through the table to find 0 0.1. So if we look, there's 0 0.1 uh, there. So that's our percent, that's our Z value 1.2816. And we've got the other one as well, which would be the negative version, minus 1.2816. So that's part A done. Part B, we need to basically turn both of those values into X values, which are the length of our light bulb. So for the first one, we can say minus 1.2816 equals x take 1175 divided by 56 and the other one 1 1.2816 equals x take 1175 over 56 and if we rearrange both of those for this x we get what do you guys say it was 1247 for the other x we get 1103 subtract those and you get the range is 144 hours. Cool. Everybody okay with those? I think most of you got that actually. Well, most of the people commenting got that. Uh, any questions? You guys all the right? Cool. Good. All right. So that's one of today's topics done. Um, I would put some more practice into that topic if I were you. 
uh, but we've done the gist of it. So um, if you could, by next Tuesday, I would like you guys to try page 49, question 4, and question 6. Uh, just if you do those two, I reckon you'll be fully, fully masters of the standard binomial. I don't know. Cool. All right, so we're going to move on. So, so far we have used a norm, sorry, as I said by numerals now, uh, normal we've used normal distribution to try and find a probability. We've used a probability to try and find a Z value. And we've used the standard distribution uh, with those kind of things as well. What we haven't done yet is try to find the mean or the standard deviation, which kind of combines everything we've done so far. So, here we go. All right, finding mu and sigma. So, so far we have found A and P. So, A is our Z values, P is our probability. We haven't found mu or sigma. So, we're going to try an example. Also, we're doing lessons on, yeah, we'll be doing lessons on Monday and Tuesday. Um, yeah, so X is that. So, okay, so we're told a few bits here. What's missing is sigma. Okay, so I could start trying to set up our equation. We could say Z equals X, or X is 46. Mu is 50 divided by sigma. But there's still two unknowns. The reason I know to use that equation is because there are no other equations that have a sigma in yeah the table doesn't have sigma you can't leave sigma blank in the calculators this is the only thing we've got we can use to find sigma so yeah i know the x value is 46 i know the mean is 50 sigma is unknown z is unknown but we do have this probability so the idea is we're going to use the probability not to find x because we know it we're going to use the probability to find z so we're going to use a standard normal distribution with this probability to find z and then we're going to work out sigma because it will be the only unknown left in this equation. So if I sketch it, because you always want to sketch it. So we've got the probability it's less than this is quite small. So I think Z is going to be here. And this is 0.2119. It's not a nice number for the probability, so it's got nothing to do with the table. So if I bring up my calculator, and let's type everything in. So we've got a probability. We want to find a value. So it's going to be a standard question. Lower is going to be zero. Well, what am I talking about? We've no. What was it? We've got probability. We want to find z. So we need to do inverse. So back to menu. Stats, uh, distribution, normal, inverse normal. Okay, so we got this. Uh, the tail does go to the left, so you could do this nice and easy on the class whiz. The area, 0.2119. And mu is 0, sigma is 1, so that's all good to go. Hit calculate, and I get that the x value, or the z value, is minus 0 0.8. So z is minus 0.8. So that Z value corresponds, this value corresponds to 46. So I can put this value into this equation with 46 and 50, rearrange it and find sigma. So minus 0.8 equals 46, take 50 over sigma, rearrange it and you'll find sigma equals 5. Cool. Right, they could just have easily have asked this question the other way around. They could have told you sigma, could have put sigma squared 25 there, could have left out mu, given you this, you find z, put z in, times by 5, take away, uh, take away 46, and you'd find 50. So you could use this method either way for finding mu or for finding sigma. But it gets a bit harder when they ask you to find mu and sigma. So if you're trying to find two different values, you're going to need two different equations that you're going to solve simultaneously in order to find mu and sigma. Other than that, it's exactly the same. So I want you guys to give this a go. Okay, there we go. So here's what I've made up. We've got unknown mu, unknown sigma, 
but we are given two different things. We're told greater than 35 is this, less than 15 is this. So same thing again, sketch it, find Z, put Z in here, put sigma in here, do that for both, solve them simultaneously, find mu, find sigma. Does it always give it in sigma squared form? Uh, yeah, you could have to root it. You have to be careful. Sometimes they would say... And you'd have to realize the standard deviation would be 5. Or they can write it 5 squared. You need to be careful. It will never be standard deviation on its own here. It will either be something you need to not have the square on or something you actually have to square root. Good question, Tom. All right, cool. <laughs> Ollie's correction. Brutal. Okay, yeah, so um, I'll give you guys three minutes. No, four minutes for this one. Because it shouldn't take too long, but there is two sets of equations to solve. So give it a go. Put your answers in the comments when you found mu and sigma. Yeah, it's bon. Um, You don't need the... Oh, no, you don't need the table. You can do all this on your calculator, Lucas. <clears throat> the table is only ever for when you know the probability it's greater than and it's quite a nice number. I guess you, you, could, do the, you could do the 35 one with the table, but uh, the other one you can do. And you can do both of these with the calculator. So to be honest, you could probably use the calculator for everything unless it specifically says use the table. So no, in this case, I would just use the calculator. Yeah, James, that is correct for sigma. Uh, try and find mu as well. That's weird. Uh, yeah, very weird. It should be about 22.
Oh weird, it started again. That's strange. Let's uh let's let's kill that. Cool. Alright, um Okay, let's go through this then. So I'm gonna do each of these in a separate colour so it's nice and clear. Uh we can draw them both on one graph, which is good. So greater than thirty five is zero point zero two five, and less than fifteen is zero point one four six nine. So we want to find the z values that correspond to those, and to do that, we're going to get out the calculator. Cool. So, uh. We've got area to the left, 0.1469. So that gives me minus 1.05. The other one, again, on the class WIRS, you'll find it a bit harder. You'll have to do one minus the probability to do greater than, but it's still doable. Um, yeah, James, I can see that now. Uh, so if you go right tail, 0.025. And to execute, we get 1.96. So we're going to kind of code both of these ones. So I can get rid of this calculator now. All right. So uh, if we do z equals x minus b over sigma, so 1.96 equals 35 minus mu over sigma, and minus 1.05 equals 15 minus mu over sigma. So I could times these out and get them both into linear equations. So let's do that. So we get 1.96 sigma is 35 take mu and also minus 1.05 sigma equals 15 take mu. And I can solve these simultaneously nice and easily. I could take away, I could do the green one, take the yellow one. And if I do that, so I'm going to subtract those, uh, we'll get 2, 3.01 sigma equals 20. And if we divide that, we get sigma is 6.64. And then substitute that back in, and we get mu is 21.98. Cool. Everyone all right with those? Should be pretty straightforward. Um, I guess it's just getting used to uh, calculators. If you've got the class with is an extra step of kind of something to think about, whereas the graph calls just type it in, it's no brainer, but cool. All right, so I think I've got one more of these that I want you guys to try on your own uh, to do with, is it a penguin question? It might be. Anyway, let's see how you guys get on with this one. Yeah, penguin question. So, penguin is an island found to be normally distributed with mean mu standard deviation sigma. Given 10% of the penguins have a mass less than 18, 5% of the penguins have a mass greater than 30. First of all, sketch it, then find mu and sigma, like we just did. And then, the last bit is a binomial question. So, you saw on Wednesday's lecture how they can mix binomial and normal together. Well, that's what's going on in part C. So, try A and B. Part C, a bit more difficult. I uh, should be able to cope with it. I had students in both my other groups manage to do it, I think. They posted the answer at least. So can you guys give it a go? Uh, comment all the answers when you got them. I think I'm going to give you six minutes this time because we're, we're doing pretty well for time today. So six minutes on the clock. Ask if you need help because it is quite difficult. But uh, yeah, give it a go. Good luck.
Yeah, you you can't comment a sketch that won't work. <laughs> I just I just assume you guys can all sketch it. I mean, it's it's the easiest part of it, really. So I, I reckon you will all be able to sketch it. And correct answers will kind of suggest that anyway. So yeah, two minutes left, guys. Uh, comment if you need any help. But that looks pretty good to me. Four point one. I just got 4.1, but 4.19 might, is it not 4.109 maybe? I'm not sure. We will see. Ugh. Yeah, roughly 23.2, uh, I think. Maybe we should have. Okay, so yeah, the masses, the massive finger thing is now done. The mic is on my head. Thank you, Lucas. Cheers. So uh, yeah, um, mass of the penguins is normally distributed with mean, mu, and standard deviation sigma. Um, okay, so we are told that 10% of the penguins have a mass less than 18. So we need to sketch this. mu in the middle, 10% uh, have a mass less than 18, so 18 here, 0.1, and we have 5% of a mass greater than 30. Cool, okay, so sketch the diagram, good. Okay, now we need to find mu and sigma. So bring up the calculator, and we're going to go inverse normal tail may as well do right because we're on it if you've got class wiz you're gonna have to do one minus that and then do tail to the left so 0 0.05 one and zero so we get this value corresponds to a z value of 1.64 the other one it has a tail to the left and corresponds to a z value of 0.1 yeah, I'm really bad with the microphone. I do that every single time. And uh, minus 1.28. Cool, so same as before. Let's get rid of the calculator. And um, move me out of the way as well, I suppose. I can go up here. So we need to do the two simultaneous equations. So we get Z minus 1.28 equals X 18 minus mu over sigma, and 1.64 equals 30 take mu over sigma. So I've got my two simultaneous equations set up, times them both by sigma to get minus 1.28 sigma equals 18 take mu, and 1.64 sigma equals 30 take mu. 
if I uh, probably the better way to do it the other way around this time. If I do the green one, the yellow one, take away the green one. I suppose. Uh, could I add them? Would that work? No, I need to subtract them. I'm going to write them out again. We've got a bit of time today. Let's let's write these out in a different order. Yellow one first. Then the green one, minus 1.28 sigma equals 18, take mu. Add these two things together. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Subtract them. So, 1.64, take, take 1.28. It's going to be adding those two things together. So we get 2.8, 2.92 equals 30, take 18 is 12. 12. So if you solve these, you get sigma equals 4.1 and mu is 23.3. Just to do some rounding to save a bit of time later. All right, cool. So next bit of the question, things change. So let's get rid of some workings here. If you do need these workings, you can rewind later, pause it and uh, copy them down. Why can't you add them? Uh, it wouldn't have cancelled out mu. I wanted me to cancel. So I'm going to put all this stuff back in over here. Um, and mu is 23.3. Sigma is 4.1 squared. Sweet. OK, so that was kind of like part of the question. That's the, uh, if I move my stuff down here, this is the normal distribution stuff. Part C is a binomial distribution stuff. So we need to write a different distribution. So I really, I've used M for the masses. I'm going to use X for my binomial. So binomial, we know the number of trials is 10. We don't know the probability of success. I'm going to label it as a P without any value. And they want us to find the probability that the number of penguins with this mass is greater than or equal to 4. So P is the probability that the mass is greater than 25. So, can everyone see what we've got here? We've got normal distribution, which we've now found. we found how to describe it. We've got binomial, but we don't have the probability here. But we know that this probability is the probability the mass is greater than 25. So, we need to do a normal question to find this bit so that we can put it in here so that we can do the binomial question with this bit uh what do you get that that does look right to me james well done so um yeah to do that we're going to use a normal distribution function for this so i'm going to write find probability m is greater than 25 and that's something i can just do on the calculator so if i bring back the calculator it's a uh, NCD question, so our lower is 25, upper put something big in, 3000, sigma we found it just now 4.1 and mu is 23.3, so we should find the probability there, lovely, so that's 0.3392. Good. Okay, if I move this guy out of the way now, so uh, calculator can disappear for a sec. Cool. 3392 then. Ooh, what am I doing? 3392 is our probability. This bit here is the probability here, which we can now write in here. So I'm going to make some space and put that where it belongs. 0.3. 392 and now we can just oh, now we can just do a binomial distribution using everything up here so because it's greater than again you might have difficulties on class with you might have to do one minus probability it's less than or equal to three which i think is what james has done in the comments we've got graphical here so we can just go straight in and go exit exit distribution binomial distribution bcd what have we got? 
lower 20 uh, lower is 4 upper while well, there's 10 penguins in total so upper is 10 number of trials is 10 and um, a probability 0.3392 i've got a horrible thought it's not 0.3392 but um but it's too late to go back now so i'm going to type it in anyway did you guys get 0.3392 as your probability? I think I've done something wrong, but maybe I rounded more this time. And you should get 0.4567. I think I'm a bit out. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and redo that last bit. I think so. I'm gonna go back to the uh, normal distribution NCD. Lower was four. Oh, it's inverse, wasn't it? Distribution normal inverse normal. Tail was to the. Did I do the tail the wrong place? No. Area. No, I wasn't doing inverse. It should have been a normal. NCD. Lower. So we wanted greater than 25. So lower should have been 25. Big value. 4.1. 23.3. Draw. Point three three nine two. No, it is point three three nine two. Um, okay. If you guys can spot what's going wrong, please let me know because it's the third time I've done this today and it worked great the other two. So my lower and binomial should be four. Upper ten. Ten trials three three nine two. Four five six seven. I didn't round these. Okay, I just I just think my answer earlier was slightly. It's they're very slightly different, but uh, we'll we'll write it down. If you do spot anything wrong with this one, um, I'm not very confident of this answer. But yeah, not point four five seven. Hmm, weird. Yeah, if you uh, if you look back through the other videos, you'll see me do this two different ways. But uh, the answer I had written down earlier, just so you guys have got it, was 0 0.446. So we are a little bit off, but it might be to do with rounding, um, rounding these figures. I think last time I uh, last time I used 0 0.26 and 0 0.4101, so maybe that's made a bit of a difference. Cool, whatever. All right. Um, Okay, so we've got how long we've got left? We've got ages actually, we've got twenty minutes, so we've gone fast today. Um I've got two other questions up here for you guys to try. Uh these are page fifty two, question twelve and question fourteen from the textbook. Um to question twelve is very similar to the one we just did, so you've got two parts to it. Um find the standard deviation, find a probability, and then we've got a binomial in part C. And then here we're finding mu and sigma, and then the interquartile range. So yeah, I would like you guys to try these um, over the next 15, 20 minutes. I'm, I think I might might just leave you to it because you've got the answers there. If you need help, you can use the Edexcel Solution Bank. Um, yeah, so if you guys could screenshot this page and try and get these done by Tuesday. Um, Tuesday we'll be moving on to the next topic within normal distributions, which is. Um, what is actually we're doing I think we're doing a normal approximation to a binomial next week which is which is good fun uh, but yeah so if you guys can work just just do a bit of practice on this make sure you're happy with it before we move on because we want to get everything kind of revised as we go at this stage so uh, does anyone have any questions about today's lecture or anything else that you want me to go over I can talk about some of these exams ah yes both of you are asking we don't know basically uh, uh boris is doing another talk <clears throat> this evening at five o'clock and he says he's going to be announcing in that talk what the plan is for your exams uh yeah i don't know he he says the exams are cancelled the a levels are cancelled i don't know if that means postponed i don't know if it means we're going to have to give you guys grades based on what we think you deserve um best bet is watch the meeting later and listen to what they say if it comes back that teachers are going to decide your grades then we'll probably have to decide with the college what approach they want to take 
I personally think it would be unfair to give you your mock grades because that was in was it beginning of February and obviously lots of you hadn't even started revising yet we hadn't even finished teaching stats and mechanics so I, I don't think they should do that um, if we get told to do that by the government or if college decide that's the best course of action that might be what we do but I I don't feel like that will be what happens um, or there might be some other kind of exam or I don't know really um, I'm trying to guess I think my ideal way would be to do like a one-on-one -on -one Skype interview and actually work out how much you know about maths just by talking to you but who knows what's gonna happen I think if you got an A or an A star in the mocks it would be very unlikely for you not to get an A or an A star um, as for students who got D's or B's or C's who maybe didn't revise um, I think it would be very harsh if you just got lumped with those mock grades so I think I think something else will happen but I'm I don't know I'm curious to see what they what their solution is as well um, as soon as we know we'll let you know so probably on Tuesday I'll have heard from the government and from college about what they want to do um, but I won't worry I think they'll have to make it fair you guys as a college cohort you guys are quite good students we're quite a good college so I wouldn't worry too much about your grades not accurately reflecting your abilities but uh for now i would definitely keep doing lectures keep doing homework and keep revising as if you had real exams because you yeah there should be some test that you know this stuff and you obviously will need to know this stuff in order to get the grade you deserve to get but i can't really tell you much more is that is that all right guys i yeah i don't know i i would play it safe and uh make sure you understand everything enough but uh i can't really give you any more guidance other than that for now oh we haven't lectures monday tuesday okay <clears throat> so um yeah okay it's a good questions uh so yeah college is shut as of you know this afternoon um students aren't allowed into college on monday and tuesday lecturers are to plan for video lessons obviously i've started already because i'm self-isolating so my plan really is just to keep teaching like normal so monday tuesday i'll just do my lessons as normal um and i'd like you guys to log in from home if you can i know other classes haven't started yet but i figure i'm here i've planned lessons we may as well may as well just keep keep rolling keep getting through the work we're we haven't fallen behind yet so we may as well stay not falling behind and as long as you guys are happy with all of this the format of it all then i don't see any problem in doing the rest of it um as for as for assignments i would do all the assignments you've got the answers anyway so you can just mark those like you were anyway email me if you get stuck i can always do assignment questions at the end of these i might try and do my workshop on wednesday um i don't know how but if you guys can send me questions beforehand i could do those questions at wednesday lunchtime or something like that um progress checks i don't know i need to speak to the rest of the math staff and see if well, maybe we'll upload all the skills checks and also upload all of the mark schemes um tutor live stream for tutor um there's not really much left to do in tutor now um i think any key messages will probably come down from above to us as tutors so i would just check your email for tutor um always has a look at what's that mean Today. so yeah i would keep revising just pretend things are as normal and that you still have exams in june after tonight maybe there'll be some more clarification on what that actually means um yeah mechanics tests i will be marking at some point this weekend so i'll try and somehow give you your grades for those next week cool any other questions guys oh the other one yeah um the other classes i'm teaching right now so i'm teaching a first year class which will be starting in a minute we're doing statistics first year so it might be worth tuning in for that at some point or watching the videos again because it's all basically today i'm going to try and go over all of the beginning of statistics again all the boring stuff 
Um, and my further maths class, I am currently trying to work all the way through first year and second year mechanics. So if you want any mechanics revision, you could tune in to my further maths uh, streams as well. But have a look, all the world math stuff I'm doing is for uh, A-level. So if you want some video revision for the other bits, have, have a look. And it's stuff you'll have done before, so you can probably sit down and watch it. Um, yeah, cool. I think that's everything. If you guys don't have any other questions, I'm going to go. Go and eat something before my last lecture. Uh, have a nice weekend. Stay safe. Stay well. And uh, yeah, get in contact if you need any help with anything at all. Cool. All right. See you later, guys. Bye.